folks, and welcome back. Um, I'm out in the woods today. I'm uh, out on a, a sort of bike packing adventure. Um, I've mostly been riding along gravel tracks and uh, woodland paths, and I've just uh, got to this nice pine woodland where I'm gonna set up camp for the night. Um, as I've come into this woodland, I'm very much aware there's a lot of flying insects about, biting insects. So before I do anything else, I'm gonna get some repellent on, because I don't wanna be scratching and itching all night long and then um, I'll look for a good spot to set up. Well, I found a nice little spot to camp here. It's in a natural little dip in the woodland. Trees are nicely spaced apart. And as I'm camping in my hammock tonight, that's a good thing. But yeah, it's a nice, nice little spot. Home from home for the night. I thought uh, before I start unpacking everything and setting up, um, I'd just show you my kind of bike setup here, how I got everything here. Um, these are all bike packing bags. Um, there are really two, well, there are three options really um, for transporting gear uh, on a bike. You can have a trailer and just tow everything behind you. And I've done that before. I have got a single wheel trailer that just sort of tracks nicely behind the bike. And that's one option. Another option is to have racks and traditional panniers, which, you know, sit out to the side here at the front and at the back. Um, and they're great. They're, they're perfect for kind of road tours and, and um, you know, cycle touring. Um, and I have panniers. I used to do a lot of cycle touring in my younger days um, and I still have all my panniers and racks and everything from that from those days. Um, but if I'm in this sort of setting in woodland or on narrow paths and tracks, I much prefer to use these bags here. They're much more in line with the bike um, and they don't stick out any further than I do or the handlebars do. So there's less likelihood of uh, kind of bumping them off trees and ripping them, ripping them off. Um, it, I just prefer it. Um, it also makes you think a bit more carefully about what you're taking because there's not as much room in, in these sorts of bags. This bag at the back here is made by Alpkit and it's just a giant seat pack, a wedge shaped seat pack. And it's amazing how much gear you can store away in this thing. Um, I've got in here all of my food. I've got my hammock, including all of the suspension. Um, I've got my Swedish folding frying pan, and I've got one can of beer. <laughs> I treated myself to bringing one can, uh, which I'll enjoy with my dinner later, and that is in there as well. In the middle of the bike, I've got this frame pack here from Blackburn. Um, this was really kindly given to me by Jake and Greg from Black, Black Bikes in Jerringham up on the North Norfolk coast. Um, they sent this to me, and um, it's brilliant. <laughs> uh, it expands, so you can have it kind of like this size, um, you know, if you're just going out for a day ride or whatever, or you can expand it down and attach it to the down tube here, and it stores loads of stuff. There's one big pocket and one smaller one here, and a couple of small mesh pockets on the other side as well. Um, I've got loads of stuff in here. I've got my stove, which is the honey with the hive expansion kit, so it's going to be a big uh, kind of twig burning stove. I've got my TJM Metalworks mini fire anchor. I've got um, my plates and chopping board, uh, I've got a knife, I've got a folding saw, I've got my kind of first aid slash sort of hygiene kit, I've got my cup, I've got all of that stuff, a pump, um, fire lighting gear, everything, all that sort of stuff is in here, fits loads of stuff. Um, I've got two cages here by Blackburn. One of these was also sent to me by uh, Jake and, and Greg, um, and these things are awesome. Um, it's just a giant cage. You can put in bigger bottles than you can do in a normal cycling cage. So I've got my one litre Nalgene bottles, a, a metal one and a plastic one down the bottom here, which I've just strapped onto the underside of the frame. But you can also strap in um, 
you know, like a small dry bag or a sleeping pad or, or a small tent even, you know, you know, just strap it in. Good bits of kit, great for cycle touring or for um, bike packing, that's for sure. And then up the front here, supported on my handlebars and resting on my, on my stem down here, I've got a 20 litre double-ended dry bag from Alpkit. And this has got my sleeping bag, it's got my hammock underquilt, it's got my tarp, um, it's got my underquilt protector, and that's it, I think. That's all just stuffed in there, so they're not compressed or anything. I literally just stuffed it all in and rolled it up, and that's in there. This bag on the front is an Ortlib bar bag. Uh, this is more of a cycle touring bag, really, than a bike packing bag, but I use it to carry my camera gear in. It, um, it has its own bracket, which mounts onto the handlebars, and it clips on, and it's quite stable. Um, so, you know, I don't have to worry too much about my camera falling off and, and breaking. So I have my main DSLR in there, which I'm filming on now. Um, all the batteries and uh, SD cards and all the other paraphernalia which goes along with that. My video light and all the rest of it for filming later on. My warm jacket I stuffed in there as well just to wrap the camera in in case I did take a tumble. And my seat pad is in there as well. My tripod um, I just strapped underneath these bungees here and that just sat along here. Obviously if you're not filming you don't take any of that stuff with you and you're a lot lighter. Right, that's the hammock and the tarp all set up. Um, I've still got to set up my under blanket and get my sleeping bag out and, and that sort of thing, but um, I, need to have a, I need to have a drink. I'm absolutely parched. I've been trying to conserve my, um, my meagre supplies of water. I only bought two litres, stupidly, but it was uh, trying to pack it all in, really. So here's my setup. I've got my war bonnet superfly tarp. Uh, <laughs> that thing cost me a fortune, uh, not only buying it, but also paying for the import duty to have it sent over from the States. But I love it. It's uh, tiny, you know, it packs up really small. It's really, really light. Um, and I love that it has these uh, spreader bars on the top there. 
it just lifts the the tarp up stops it sagging down gives you a bit more sort of working space underneath i've got it set up really shallow tonight because you know we are in the summer i don't need it for weather protection that's for sure and that will just give me a bit of airflow underneath and should stay a little bit cooler that's really just for that sort of like morning dampness um, and just in case we get a we get a shower but there's not not any forecast i've got a hennessy asim deluxe i think it was uh hammock um this is the same one that i modified so it didn't have a zip on it originally it was one of those weird sort of bottom entry <laughs> uh hammocks i put a zip in it's much easier much better now and then i've got a summer weight um under blanket one of gingers a ginger hammocks one um, this is actually a prototype one he'd made ages ago and uh, and gave to me um it's just a sort of three quarter length just a light down fill be ideal tonight i probably don't even really need it to be honest but it's there it's that, it's that kind of like early morning uh coolness isn't it you know sort of like four o'clock in the morning when it seems to just temperature seems to drop so i'll just keep me keep me toasty and then i've got an under blanket protector also a ginger hammocks one yeah all good should be good and comfy in there tonight I'm going to be cooking in the honey stove with the hive extension which just adds two sides the honey is normally a six-sided stove smaller than this um, but you can get an extension kit which just makes it bigger um, i'm using this just to keep it contained i'm in pine woodland i have dug down to sand but just to just to be on the safe side i'm going to keep it contained within here um, i've collected a load of load of twigs and i'm just going to use some of this uh, hammer o tinder card um, you buy this in sheets and um, if you peel it apart like this it makes a really good tinder um, just take your knife and uh, fluff it up a little bit just to get some of those fibers to the surface there and that will take a, a spark really nice and easily I've just got a load of really thin birch twigs here from a, a birch tree that was down. So hopefully they should catch nicely. I've uh, positioned the stove um, just away from where I'm sleeping tonight, just so I don't risk putting any holes in my tarp. Um, and there's a convenient log so I can sit on it while I, while I cook and stuff. Um, I'm not gonna use the grill that comes with the honey stove or the hive stove. I'm gonna use my TJM mini fire anchor. Um, that way I've got some adjustment. I can adjust it up and down 
Um, you know, these stoves, twig stoves, they tend to burn pretty hot. Um, and you've got to keep feeding them. So uh, this way it gives me some clearance to get twigs under and I can raise it up and lower it down um, so that my food doesn't burn. I'm gonna be cooking um, a favorite of mine and I haven't had it for ages, liver and onions. Not everybody's cup of tea, I know, but um, I really like it. And I'm gonna have it with uh, mushrooms and with bacon. I'm gonna cook it with, with the mushrooms and bacon and, um, and make it into a gravy and kind of have it in wraps is my plan. I've got my onions on just cooking down with some uh, bacon lardons for flavour and here I've got my uh, liver. This is lamb's liver and I've also got some seasoned uh, flour here. Just plain flour with uh, pepper and some of that lovely uh, wild garlic salt that Claire O'Leary sent me. Um, and I'm just going to put the, the uh, liver, which is already sliced into thin slices, um, into that flour, that seasoned flour. And then I'll cook it in that and then um, that will hopefully thicken up into a gravy when I add some stock towards the end. suffering from small pan syndrome here again but this was the biggest pan I could fit in <laughs> that's right it's doing the job right I've also got a stock pot to put in here you know me and these Norse stock pots I love them so I'm going to blop that into the top and then some water to create a sauce. Dinner is ready. Look at that. Yep. Oh, that is good.
Hmm. I forgot my beer. Now I only brought one. So I thought I'd better make sure it's a good one. Dinner was absolutely delicious. Nothing like that uh, <laughs> shoe leather muck they used to serve up to us in school, that's for sure. I'm sure that's why so many people in, in this country don't like liver, but tonight's was absolutely delicious and really good in a wrap. I hadn't done that before. That was um, purely just to save on a bit of washing up and uh, it worked well. It was a really good wrap filler. Yeah, good. I've just got some water on to boil. I'm gonna make a, a hot chocolate. I've got a, a really nice Norwegian hot chocolate to have tonight, which is even better than oh boy. Dare I say it. <laughs> I'm certainly on a par with it anyway. Yeah, a, a viewer sent me some and they're really good. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, I've been getting quite a few comments about uh, about views and about videos and notifications. I don't know what's going on with YouTube at the moment, but for some reason people aren't getting uh, notified when I put videos up. And, um, and people are just assuming that I haven't been releasing them. Um, I try and get a video up every week. It doesn't always happen. I didn't have one up last week, for example, because it was the bank holiday weekend um, prior to that, and that's when I would normally film. But I was uh, doing family stuff. Um, which, you know, I need to do. I need to spend time with the family as well. Um, but generally I try and get a video up um, every week, but you know, every now and again, there will be, a, be a, a week that's missed. So if you think you have been missing videos, <clears throat> uh, just go along to the channel and, and just have a little look. There may be videos that you've, that you've missed because YouTube hasn't let you know. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Um, just Just check that the bell is clicked. Um, and you should get notified when I when I release a, a video, but um, it doesn't seem to always be happening. Yeah, some weird algorithm thing um, from YouTube. Don't know what's going on there. Uh, I think this water is up to boil. Yep. drunk up and I'm going to go and zip myself into my hammock and uh, zip the mosquito net up and get some get some sleep. This is a nice spot here. It's really nice and peaceful. I've been here in a cuckoo for most of the evening. Um, it was quite a long way off and then it's progressively got closer and closer. It's obviously gone now but while it was still light I know not everybody likes a cuckoo because they're bullies of the bird world aren't they but um, I quite like the sound they make and there was an owl earlier as well yeah really nice yeah yeah it's a good little spot I do love pine woodland it's that nice kind of muffled muffled sound you get it's different it's different to all other woodlands night right, folks
morning folks. I've um, just got up, had a cup of coffee, and um, made myself some breakfast. I've just got uh, one of those um, <clears throat> vacuum packed uh, sort of potato brunch type of things you can get from the supermarket. It's just sliced potato and bacon. They're really good. They're shelf stable. They last months and months and months. And um, I had one sitting in my cupboard, so that's what I'm having for breakfast. If I can balance this pan on this log, that is. <laughs> um, I slept. I slept really well. Um, very comfortable. Um, nice and warm. It wasn't a cold night anyway. But um, you know, I had the sleeping bag unzipped and off me mostly, and just pulled it over me in the early hours. I woke up about half past four, something like that, needing a pee. And um, it was a, a little bit chilly then. And um, and first thing this morning, getting up, I just put my my uh, coat on. Um, although it's not really cold, cold. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Sun streaming through the trees. Yeah, lovely. I um, drifted off to sleep last night to the sound of muntjac deer barking in the distance um, and the odd owl. It was absolute bliss. Ooh. One last cup of coffee and then pack away. Well, I'm all packed away and tidied up. Um, as luck would have it, my uh, my big camera, my DSLR, decided to give up the ghost <laughs> just as I was uh, recording packing away after breakfast. Um, I don't know what's wrong with it. It's gone into some sort of weird settings mode and, um, and I can't get it out of that mode. It won't record or anything. Um, but I've got my phone, so I'll just have to finish, um, you know, finish the video recording on my phone, which is fine. Um, yeah, all packed away. Um, there's very little evidence of me ever having been here, you know, a bit of scuffed moss on the ground where I've been walking around and things, but um, that's no worse than what the deer do, and um, that'll all recover in, uh, in no time at all. Yeah, it's been a really nice camp, beautiful spot, um, nice food, good food last night, good food, good food this morning, nice breakfast, and um, really nice to reset that old mental well-being button, yeah. You've got to get out into the woods now and again just to reset. Yeah, really nice. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.